Hey, FCA family. Good to be with you here today for the two-minute drill, maybe a three-minute drill this morning, but we are going to focus in this week on my favorite topic, the gospel. You'll hear more about different aspects of the gospel throughout the week, but the gospel simply means good news. And more specifically, it's the good news about what God has done in and through his son, Jesus Christ, to reconcile sinners to himself. But in order for, under, for us to understand that good news, there, there naturally must be bad news. More on that tomorrow. And what I want to do this morning is back up even further, because I think in order for us to truly understand what the good news is, we, we have to understand something about God. And, and I want to start with a question. How, how do you view God? And, and I think there's, there's a tendency for us to fall into one of two different ditches, and there's dangers in both. Um, one ditch would be the person that says there's either no God or they view God as, as kind of a distant, um, impersonal being who doesn't really care about his creation, doesn't want to be involved in the affairs of men. In, in the other ditch, there, there's the people that, that almost bring God down to our level, um, almost to, to view God as a, almost like a grandfatherly type figure. Well, there's dangers in both of those, and, and there's so much we could share about the nature and character of the one true God. He, he is creator. He's sovereign. He's all-knowing. He's all-powerful. He's, he's a God of love, uh, but he's also just. And I'd encourage your, you to, to give your life to knowing and to, to studying God. It'll change your life. Uh, but what I want to do real briefly this morning is to zero in on, on one important attribute of God that I think will help us make sense of both the bad news coming tomorrow and, and the good news coming later this week. The Old Testament prophet Isaiah writes about a vision that he had in, in his book, Isaiah chapter 6, where um, he sees the Lord God sitting on a throne, high and lifted up. And there are these fiery, uh, powerful, angelic beings that are surrounding the throne. And, and what they're doing is they're calling out to one another continuously. They're saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And, and over and over in the Bible, we, we see God described as a holy God. But we see this especially in Isaiah chapter 6, where, where we see the intensity of this threefold repetition of the seraphim's cry, holy, holy, holy. But what does this word holy mean? Um, I, I always remember going shopping for an engagement ring, and, and I walked into the, the jewelry store, and the, the jeweler takes carefully takes out a, a diamond, albeit a small one at that point in our lives. Sorry, Katie, my wife. Uh, but what he did is he, he put it on a black velvet cloth so that I could see the glory and the radiance and the perfection in this particular cut of diamond. And, and in the original language, the, the word holy actually means cut off or separate. In the same way, God is completely separate above his creation. He, he is not like us. Uh, one word to use would be that he is otherly. Unlike you and I, God is, is, has absolute moral purity, and, and he commands the very same from us. He created us in his image, and, and he alone deserves all praise and honor and worship from his creation as the holy God of the universe. Well, how do you, how do you and how, how do I measure up? Well, you're going to need to check out tomorrow's two-minute drill where we'll get a glimpse of the implication for you and I of God's holiness and his justice. Great to be with you. We'll see you tomorrow.